Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're sculpting a barrel. Now this is a continuation of the low poly barrel. So we'll be using that barrel and we'll be sculpting what we made. The link's in the description to that video if you want to have a go at it, or you can just download the model. Now this is generally for a beginner slash intermediate level. So a beginner that's relatively comfortable with all the controls and that have had maybe a few goes at different projects. I'll be talking about the difference between Dyne Topo and Remesh, and I'll be using the Mesh Filter for smoothing out our mesh, and I'll be using the Layer Brush as well, so lots of different things here for you to get stuck into. Do check out the playlist in the description and my website for more great courses like this, and if you want more sculpting videos, then check out my sculpting playlist. So you'll notice I've got two barrels here. One is all one object, and that's the most efficient way to do a low poly barrel, but when you're sculpting, it's helpful to have separate objects like the metal braces going around here and the barrel itself. That way it makes it much easier to sculpt. So we'll be working on these two here. So I'll take this one and delete it. And I'll move these into the center with Alt-G. Alt-G removes any movement. Now before going into sculpt mode, it's really helpful if you have a symmetrical object, especially in the Z axis. So the one going up and down, because that way we can sculpt one half and it will save us a lot of time. And then we can turn off symmetry and start adding some variation. If you've downloaded the barrel, that's already done for you. But for those that are continuing from the last episode, I'll quickly go through that. Now I'll use an add-on called Auto Mirror. So Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then just type in Auto. And there's the Auto Mirror there. Make sure it's ticked. Close that down. And then press N on your keyboard to get this panel up here. And you should, under Edit, have the Auto Mirror tool. So we'll select on the barrel, and we want to mirror in the Z axis, or Z if you're American. And we want the positive one to stay, and it to go across to the negative. So Auto Mirror. That way we've got a symmetrical object and we can sculpt one side. If I go into edit mode, you can see that we've now got half the barrel and we've also got a mirror modifier, which gives us the other half. Now, when you go into sculpt mode, you'll need to apply this. So I'll make sure I'm in object mode and press control A over my mirror and it's applied. So now when I go into edit mode, it's all one mesh, but it is symmetrical. We'll do the same for the metal brackets. So into object mode, select the brackets, auto mirror, and we can see they're the same now. If I go into edit mode, back into object mode, and let's control A to apply that as well. So now we can sculpt and we only have to do one side. Now, one other thing before going into sculpt mode is it's looking very chunky. This is okay for the barrel. I'll just click away so we can see that more easily. So it looks like it's got wooden slats, but for the metal around the outside, I don't think that low poly look works. So if we go into edit mode and into edge mode with two on my keyboard or up here, I want to select each of these edges going downwards like this. And to select an edge loop, you press Alt left click. Now that's quite time consuming going all the way around like this. So we can select all with A. And if I press Control Shift on these edge loops, I can remove them like this. So we end up with all those edge loops going downwards. We also want to get rid of these ones. So Control and Box Select, like so. And we've got all those and we can press Control B now to bevel. So Control B to bevel. And we can come out to around about here. And that kind of smooths it out. Now yes, we've got this sort of dent in here, but that won't make much difference at all. Okay, so we've got our barrel ready for sculpting. And it's probably a good idea to save your work at this point or make a copy of this object in case something goes wrong and you want to come back to it. So in order to sculpt, we need to go to sculpt mode at the top here. I'll start with the barrel though. So I'll select that and I'll go into sculpting with that. And we're in the sculpting workspace. I'll pull out the brush name so you can see what I'm using. If you've not seen the sculpting workspace, you've got all your controls up the top here, which are the same down the side here under the active tool and workspace settings. Now I've got my draw brush enabled, and if I left click on my object, it starts sculpting it, but really slowly and not much is happening. I'll undo that. Well, what's going on is that we've got no topology to work with. If I go into edit mode, we can see that it's really low poly. So it's just moving these single verts. We need to either remesh this or flood fill this with lots of faces and then we can start adding some detail. So back into sculpt mode. Now my preferred method is the remesh option. However, with this, I find it's much easier because it's got lots of notches and things and we want to cut out areas of the shape. It's better to use the Dyne Topo option. So I'll tick that. Don't worry about the warning message. It has to do with the UVs, it's not important. Go to my drop down here and the easiest way to do it for beginners is to change the detailing to constant. That means it's always going to be this resolution of the brush up here and we'll change that to 30, I would say. Then we can do a detailed flood fill and it will fill the entire mesh in with a resolution of 30. So let's do that, detailed flood fill, and we'll see what we get here. You can see that it's changed my mesh, if I go into edit mode, into all these triangular 
faces like this. So now when I start sculpting, you can see that it adds the detail that I want. I'll undo those strokes. Now I'm using a pen tablet and you can find out more about that in the description or in my other videos. And it does make the job a lot easier, but you can do this with a mouse. It's not impossible. It just takes a bit longer. Okay, so it needs a little bit of smoothing out. There's a lovely tool if we go down to the bottom. There's a mesh filter. And up the top here, instead of inflate, we can change that to smooth. And now when I click and drag, it starts smoothing out my mesh, as you can see there. And we just want a bit of smoothness, probably around to about there. Okay, so let's go back to our brushes at the top here. And I think the draw sharp will be the most helpful now. Remember to tick the Z axis or the Z axis for symmetry. So it'll do the same to the top as to the bottom. And we can start sculpting on this and drawing our lines, which are our planks. They don't have to be evenly spaced. So having a three here and a two here perhaps, in terms of distance apart, gives it that really old organic look. I'll indent a bit more here. The draw sharp's a great brush for sort of sketching with almost. So I can sketch in these lines and crevices nice and easily. Now remember you've got your tools on the right hand side if you want to change the size or strength of your brush. Now I'm noticing the detail is a little bit blocky, so I might go up a little bit higher in the resolution. Usually I start off quite low, but we have the base mesh already, so we can bring the detail up a bit more. And I've just noticed I've not actually ticked the dime topo, so that needs to be ticked as well. And press OK. It doesn't make any difference with the draw sharp brush, because it's not actually using the dime topo, but if we go to something like the draw brush, and start drawing with that, it actually adds mesh to our object like this. And that's what we want. Anyway, back to the draw sharp, and I'll go back to the Dyn Topo and change it to 50 and do a detailed flood fill. And also, I'll go to my overlays here and tick the statistics, then you can see how many faces my mesh has got. Now, 300,000 is actually quite low, and we can see how we get on with that. We might want to add some more detail, but at the moment it looks okay. I'll do a few more lines. So I'm just creating a simple outline shape at the moment. So there's our barrel to start off with. We can create some planks at the top here as well. And of course, everything we do at the top is the same at the bottom as well. Okay, that's a good starting point, but I think some of these need a bit more depth in them. And if I come in and start trying to add depth with the draw sharp, it does an okay job, but it starts doing this sort of strange pinching, if you can see that just here. And this is the great thing about the Dyn Topo tool, which the Draw Sharp doesn't utilize. If we use the Draw tool, however, and I'll resize my brush with F, and if you want to dig into the mesh with the Draw brush, you hold down Control, and you can see when I dig in, it actually deletes the mesh and creates new topology. That's what we want. So I want to create a big indent like this. If you want to smooth out, you can hold down Shift and smooth areas out. So I'm holding down Control and digging into the mesh to create that sort of plank like that. So I can do that in a few other places, maybe around here as well. So hold down control. And the lovely thing about that Dyn Topo tool is that it creates this new topology. If I go to edit mode now, you can see how nice and even the topology is because it's digging into the shape and creating new topology all the time. And that's the nice thing about the Dyn Topo workflow instead of the remesh workflow, which I often show. Back to sculpt mode. Let's consider doing this one here. Okay, so we've got a bit more detail there. Another tool which is handy is the crease brush and you can kind of squeeze shapes together. So if I start creasing this in, you can see it squeezing together a bit. I'll smooth out that area a little bit as well. And it's looking quite nice in terms of a good line between the two. Kind of sharpens it up. Notice I'm not messing really with many of the brush settings. It's not particularly necessary for this particular sculpt. Sharpening things up with the crease brush. It creates a crease but brings the shape together as well, which is quite nice. Okay, so that's working. I might smooth out some of these. So hold down shift and smooth out some of those lines just there. And just at the top there. Okay, so that's working quite well. I think we can go to the next level of detail now. That's interesting, my Dyn Topo keeps getting turned off. So I'll turn that back on again. That's because I went into edit mode earlier and when I came back in, it turns it off. So just be aware if your Dyn Topo isn't ticked, you might need to go back to it. If you don't have that enabled, then you can't create that new topology or dig into the mesh nice and easily. 
You won't notice that on the draw sharp or the crease brush because it doesn't utilize it. So on the Dyne Topo, we'll go up to 70 this time and do a detailed flood fill. Now with this sort of detail, up to almost 600,000 triangles, still fairly low really, and most computers should be able to handle that. But just be aware, the higher you go up, the harder your computer will have to work. Okay, so I think back to the draw sharp and we'll start adding a little bit of detail now in terms of some lines down here, just like this, nice and simple. And this is the grain of the wood. You can change the strength over here, of course. Shift F is changing the strength as well. You might want to do the odd kind of circle as well. Gives it a bit of style. Tricky to see though, but just a few lines giving that sort of wood grain. Now to recenter your brush, Alt middle click will sort of recenter on a section. I keep having to bring it across because I've got my brushes down the side here, so it's not quite central. Make sure your grains go all the way around to the top of the wood. And again, this is all with the draw sharp. It's a nice brush just for sketching out a few lines at the top here as well. Give it that sort of woody look. Try and vary the depth of your lines as well. So some light and some thick. That's easy with a pen tablet because you can change the strength with your pressure. And that's that button just there. That's pen pressure for strength. You can also change it for radius as well, which I often use. Just smooth this area out in here a little bit and redraw the line. It looks a little bit jaggedy. You might want a deeper groove for maybe where the planks separate. But again, that's a bit of preference. Depends what style you're going for, really. OK, that's working reasonably well. Let's work on the brackets now. Now to change between objects when you're in the sculpting workspace, the easiest way is to control tab and go into object mode, select on your object and then control tab into sculpt mode. And control tab brings up this pie menu and it's nice and easy to sort of move around between the modes. So sculpt mode like this. So first of all, we need to remesh our object. So we'll tick on the dying topo. Don't worry about the warning message. And we can go fairly high with the resolution, but we'll start off with 40 again because we might want to get rid of some of this sort of jaggedy lines. So detailed flood fill with 40, and that's about that resolution. And we want to come down and use our smooth mesh filter. So mesh filter, we're on the smooth already. So click and drag and give it a little bit of smoothness round about there. Now make sure you remember to put the Z axis on. Back to my brushes up here, and the scrape brush is the one we'll want to use for this. Now you might want to go around a little bit and smooth some of these ridges out so just hold down shift and just to go around and smooth those out by hand in a sense rather than using that mesh filter just make sure you're happy all the way around now what we can do is we can also mirror in the x and y if we really want to speed the process up i'll show you what that does but just be aware we haven't quite got symmetry in the x and y so depending on how wobbly your brackets are will depend how effective this is. But when I put my mouse here, you can see it mirroring across all three axes. And if you're ever confused about the axes, you've got your Cartesian coordinates at the top here. But if I use this scrape brush on the edge, this is quite a nice brush where you can scrape around the edges like this, and it gives it that sort of blizzard look where the edges have been scraped off. And at this point, it might be worth increasing the Dyne Topo actually to something like 60. We'll do a detailed flood fill again, and let's just bring the brush down a, a touch and then we'll just maybe sharpen that up just a tiny bit and you see how I'm only having to do a quarter and it's doing the bottom there and all around so that's useful if you've got a symmetrical object to have the X and Y as well let's do the underside as well and you can bend it fairly nice and wobbly with this and get away with it that's why I'm not too worried if it's symmetrical it should work reasonably well okay so we've got a nice look there the other brush that I like for this is the layer tool now this is an interesting brush. I'll turn my symmetry off now in all axes because we're adding a tiny bit of detail to our mesh. And if I draw with this, you can see that it creates a layer above the surface. That can be very useful. So I'll undo that. And I want to create tiny sort of dents in the surface, but this is way too big, but it creates a nice flat dent for us. And can you see how it always goes to the same level as long as you keep your mouse button down? If I start again, it will create a new layered dent. So I'll undo those two again. What we can do though is bring the height down, way down to 0 0.01, somewhere around there. See what that's like? So hold down control, that's still too thick. So a little bit lower and we can type in here. So 0 0.001, hold down control and we're getting there now. 
that's just a tiny sort of blemish in the metal like that and I really like that look I can put some blemishes around the place and it's nice and easy just hold down control draw a sort of blob and you've got your blemish maybe a few dots here and there all the way around doing just these sort of simple blemishes not too many actually I'm probably going overboard here really and I'll just change the thickness for a couple so 0 0.0015 for some alt left click if ever you want to center your brush just that little bit more detail there I can probably go up a little bit higher actually for this kind of fine detail so let's go to the dine topo again let's change it to 80 again just keep an eye on your triangles over here so a detailed flood full of that and we might want to just smooth out that a little bit and then reapply it with that extra detail no I'll undo that that went wrong so it's almost where it's sort of rusted off or chipped off or flaked off and you can see the effects there I'm probably doing a bit too many so I'll just smooth that one out let's just check I've got them most of the way around so there's no sort of gaps just one there okay the other thing that I like to do is some dents and scratches so we can use the draw sharp for the smaller ones so let's go into here bring my brush down and just create some small scratches it's a bit too much so I'll bring my brush a bit lower it's gone off at a bit of a curve so we'll undo that one okay we'll try that again I'll try and get a bit straighter this time we can make some really chunky sort of dents as well if we want to like this and then bring the brush down and then thin it out but remember the draw sharp doesn't do a great job because it doesn't utilize the dine topo so we can use the draw brush for anything that's really thick we want to go with a deep crevice like that then maybe smooth out if we need to and then use the draw sharp to kind of smarten it up like this and we created a reasonable dent like that you can use the crease as well to kind of bring it in together and you've got that sort of scratch and dent like that okay let's back to the draw sharp and just create some minor scratches again the trick is to not go overboard which is easily done when you're doing this sort of detail it's quite fun create another thicker one here remember hold down control to dig in with the draw brush and if you hold down control with the draw sharp you can create some sharp edges that so brings the mesh outwards so control is just the reverse of the brush okay so we've got a few scratches there and that's working reasonably nicely you might want some actual dents as well so the draw brush is obviously going to be a good one for that let's alt left click on this space here and just hold down control and dent some areas in a bit and we can sharpen up the edges either with the crease reversed so holding down control sort of sharpening those edges up around the dent or the draw sharp reversed so holding down control again will increase that sort of crease so I'll do a couple more of those okay so that's a reasonable barrel I'll just go in and add a little bit more detail to the wood for the main barrel so control tab to go to our pie menu object mode select our barrel control tab and go to sculpt mode do remember you need to click on the dine topo once again if you want to use that what you might want to do at this stage if you want to add some really fine detail is start using the remesh because we've cut out the shape and we've got the detail that we want we can turn off the dine topo and instead use the remesh options here so you can combine the two it can be a tiny bit glitchy this so make sure you've saved your work before you do this because you can get all sorts of anomalies but I can come across here with the remesh the important thing is the voxel size so we're at 0 0.01 and if I remesh now by either pressing this button here or as you can see the shortcut is Control R so I'll press that we suddenly lose all our detail and get this horrible blob like this so I'll undo that instead if I look at my mesh size just here and I press Shift R I can resize my voxels and the voxels are how small the faces are going to be and I can come down to somewhere probably around here I left click I couldn't see my number which was way out here but it was 0 0.0065 and then I can press Control R to remesh now again you do have to watch out a little bit this could be very detailed and you can see your faces up here and this is taking a little while so it might be quite fine so I've got just under 700,000 faces which again should be fine for most machines 
and now I can come in and start adding some real detail. I've still got my Z symmetry on and I can add a few sort of woody type details in here. And you can see I can go much finer with the mesh details now. But you can't make any really big changes to your mesh as easily with the remesh. You keep having to remesh all the time and it can kind of slow you down and it's much easier to do the sort of big notches and dents in objects when you've got Dyn Topo going. Remember to also smooth with holding down shift. When you're using symmetry like this, you do want to go in eventually and just create a little bit of variation right at the very end. And I'm following the grain for the most part, but every now and again, it's good to just add a little bit of notches, a little bit of variation to the wood like this, sort of wobbliness, scratchiness that goes across. A few scratches in there as well, not too deep, because again, the remesh doesn't like that so much. You have to keep remeshing in order to do that. Okay, so I've done a bit of detail there. I'll turn the symmetry off and start adding a bit more variation. And I can work on the middle a bit more when the symmetry's off to make it much less uniform. And lastly, what I like to do to really make it less uniform is get the grab brush out, make it nice and big and just add a little bit of variation to your shape so the top's a bit different from the bottom. And there we have it, our sculpted barrel. If you want to learn about texturing I do go through texturing in lots of my other sculpting videos and it's a very similar technique for this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and remember to take a look at my other playlists if you want more of the same. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.